Now, y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess, so let's get into it. What up, what up, y'all? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, honey. We are here for another supersized Yes for the Mess. This is going to have like five different stories on here, so we're going to be on here for at least about 20 minutes. Y'all already know how that goes. But before we get into today's mess, let me let you guys know what's coming up, okay? Get ready Friday night for Boys Night Out. It would be Friday night at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern. 8 30 central time okay me and the boys are going to get together for a good time so be sure to tune in to see all of our shenanigans everybody will be there this friday except for josiah because josiah has to work that night however me jamar t and maddie we're going to hold it together and hold it down while our boy jojo um gets his coin okay so be on the lookout for boys night out friday night at 9 30 cent uh 9 30 eastern 8 30 central time okay so be on the lookout for that all right so with that being said y'all we're about to go ahead and we're gonna get into a little bit of mess today this is like your you know your drive home mess from work this is basically what this is because you know normally you know normally i give y'all some lunchtime gossip but this is like that it's five o'clock gossip pretty much you know when you get home from work gossip you know that type of thing when you're driving home and you want to hear some good mess that's what this is okay so um before we get into that also if you have not seen this past live chat that i did about Ariane and martel and sheree you really need to get into it because that is the funniest shit ever i i would i cannot stop watching it it was so funny but however we're going to get into our first thing of mess okay and the first thing we're going to get into is scrappy and bambi okay now as you guys already know shay johnson just had a baby and miss mama d has been out here like claiming shay's baby as her grandbaby and all types of stuff and it's leaving people to wonder if scrappy is the baby daddy okay that's what it's leaving the people to wonder now um apparently she was on live and i got this from the neighborhood talk and she pretty much debunked those rumors about scrappy being shay johnson's baby daddy let's listen to what bambi had to say let's let's get into it does scrappy really have a baby by that bra who's that bra and the only kid scrap got is the ones y'all see on his page so sorry to ruin the next episode for y'all because he ain't the daddy <laughs> he ain't the daddy oh my god y'all is so weird no y'all not weird the people who make it look like he the daddy is weird as they hella weird I hate that. because if i had a baby in my motherfucking body and somebody try to pin it on somebody who ain't the daddy i'm gonna be like this what is you doing to me and my life like that's an insult to the baby mama ain't it All righty then, that was Bambi, and she pretty much debunked any type of rumor about Scrappy being Shay Johnson's baby daddy. Of course, she didn't say the name, but she already knew who it was. And the weird person that she's referring to is Mama D, because like I said, Mama D has been out here claiming this woman's child as her grandbaby. Okay, as if anything, I'm gonna find that story because she definitely been doing it. And um, I think it's messed up that she's been doing that because, but she's always disrespected Bambi. But then again, um, she's also disrespected um Erica too. And I just feel like Mama D um has always liked has al has always liked Shay more so than um uh, more so than um Bam more so than Erica or Bambi, pretty much. So um this is what was said so let me go back off screen now this is what was said now this is coming from urbanbellmag.com this is what was said now as you guys uh already know on um, love and hip-hop miami is back and you know that shay johnson is on love and hip-hop miami um on the second part of the uh, fourth season or whatever and you know she's pregnant now mama d calls the stir not too long ago probably about a couple of days ago went um at an event that she had okay now um 
interestingly enough, it was on this particular episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami or whatever. Uh, Shay hadn't shared nothing with nobody, and she said that she was gonna make in a um, make make the announcement to family and friends at a fake product um, launch event. However, I didn't watch the show because Love and Hip Hop Miami is a bore to me. However, Mama D caused a stir at the event when she told the people that she wishes that Scrappy would have married Shay instead of Bambi. And then she wonders if Scrappy could be the father of Shay's unborn baby. Now, that's how that came about because she said that, okay? Because of the fact that she said that. So, um, it didn't happen. Um, so, I, basically, I got the story wrong. This actually happened on an episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami where Mama D said to the people that she wishes that Scrappy had married Shay or whatever. I feel like that's completely out of line. And I feel like that is completely disrespectful. When you know that your son is married to this woman and you're just going to continue to go out here and talk about a woman that never was. Shay was, is a never was. That's just what it is. She's a never was. And for you to sit up here and do what you're doing, that's really messed up. That's messed up, bruh. It's messed up that you still going to do this. Like you still going to sit up here and put Shay on this pedestal like she was just the best thing that ever happened to Scrappy. You did that with Erica and you doing that shit with Bambi now. And for you to even make it seem like, you know, this, this woman's child is, um, he is, that's crazy because you like, by you saying that and doing that, you putting doubt in the minds of, you know, in Bambi's mind, because not only is Scrappy the father of her kids, but Scrappy is her fucking husband. So you making it seem as though this man is out here smashing Shay behind her back and shit. And that would be messed up if he was. You know what I'm saying? Like that would be completely messed up if he was really doing it. But I think that Mama D has her own agenda. And she's always had her own agenda. And I don't know why she feels like Shay is the one I'll be off of Scrappy. But that's pretty disrespectful for her to be doing some shit like that. I, I can't say it enough. It's very disrespectful. I don't see how... Um, she could go along with some shit like that. And I understand why Bambi really don't respect her like that because Mama D don't respect the relationship. I mean, she don't respect the marriage. She don't respect anything. She really doesn't. She really doesn't. And I just I just think it's very unfortunate that um, she would even think that that would be okay. It, it's, it's nothing ever okay for a woman that is supposed to be your husband's mama sitting up here talking to his ex-fuck buddy and say that, I wish that he married her. I wish that her baby was my son's baby. And that's going to always be my grandpa. All that weird shit. Mama D, girl. Okay. But anyway, we're about to move on to the next story. Okay. So that's enough of, you know, Bambi and Scrappy and Mama D and all that stuff. So we're going to move on to the next story, child. And the next story is Kim Zosiak, honey. Kim Zosiak. Mm, she don't look like that no more. But um, as you guys already know, Kim has been in the news because of her daughter's arrest. Okay, we already know that. So um, the thing of it was, you know, Ariana, uh, Ariana, I think that's her name, Ariana Beerman, she was um in the news for driving drunk or whatnot. Okay, she was in the news for driving drunk. And um, Kim Zosiak reacts to the arrest. So this is what she had to say. And this is coming from page six um, dot com or whatnot. So Kim denied that Ariana drove drunk, but she does claim that she consumed marijuana like three days after the 20 year old was um, arrested on suspicion of a DUI. So then um, she was like, that was 24 hours prior to her contact with the law enforcer. That's what she said. She was co cooperative and honest. So um, this is so I'm going to read the whole um, thing. This is what she said. She said Ariana was involved in a minor fender bender when the police arrived on scene. The, the investigating officer immediately initiated an uh, investigation for DUI of alcohol. Despite Ariana's constant um, invocation that she was upset and anxious from the minor accident, the officer incorrectly concluded that she was impaired. That was not the case. While we have no desire to litigate this case in the media, Ariana was not impaired by any substance, including alcohol or marijuana. So then, um, let's see, let's see. Okay, that's, that's the whole thing. Now, as we said, the mishap broke on Sunday. One day after the college student was arrested on charges 
of driving with an uh, under the influence of alcohol, improper and erratic lane change, and um, underage possession purchase of alcohol. And she was released on a $5,120 bond. Ariana was with her boyfriend, Hudson McElroy, at the time of the accident. Her 20 her 20 year old partner was also arrested for an alleged DUI, as well as allegedly furnishing alcohol to a minor and um, violating the conditions of his limited driving permit. The couple has dated on and off since their romance began in high school. I don't really care about this story. You know, I know that a lot of folks been talking about it and everything and thing else. And um, I just feel like this. It doesn't matter. I mean, something happened. And for you to say, I don't know. Cause a lot, cause I don't really be believing nothing that Kim be saying. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna be real. I never believed Kim, and I don't really believe her now. Her daughter was doing too much and she got into a car wreck. And that's just what it is. The shit the shit just happens sometimes. And I don't know what she's trying to do or what image she's trying to fucking protect, but that's just what happened. Your daughter was in an accident. She was doing too much. She had no business drinking or whatever the fuck she was doing. And on top of that, they had possession of alcohol. So obviously it, it could have been something had to happen for them to be, you know, doing all that Rick and Mara on the highway and all that other shit. Something had to happen. So I don't know. If it was alcohol, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it had to be something. She told me something. Oh, it was marijuana. You know, she had marijuana before that. Blah, blah, blah. So what really happened then? Because they already was doing some shit they had no business doing. They already had alcohol in the car. So you don't think they took a shot or nothing before they got on the road? Because sometimes you can get drunk off two shots, not just a full glass. So what are you saying, Kim? She always, but as usual, she's just being a protective mother. But I don't see nothing wrong with that. But girl, bye, whatever. We ain't really got much for this story. Let's move on to uh, ASAP Rocky. Let's move on to him now. Uh, you are y'all already know that he was facing some time in jail. You know, on a charge. Um, so according to the New York Post, you know, ASAP Rocky, he's pleading not guilty to the assault and weapon charges that he received in L.A. Now, this is what was said. Y'all know I'm not going to read the entire article at this point in time. Y'all already know what I do now. I'm just going to summarize some of it. So as we already know, um, ASAP Rocky pleaded not guilty to assault and weapons charges stemming from a beef that he had with a former rapper friend in, in L.A. Now, he wore a navy blue shirt, sparkling diamond earrings. It was trailed by three bodyguards as he arrived at L.A. criminal court for his arraignment. Now, he is a Manhattan native. And his real name is Rakim Mayers. And he's accused of firing two gunshots in the direction of one-time ASAP Mob Rap Collective member ASAP Rally in November. Okay? He walked with the swagger to the podium inside of the courtroom and struck a pose with his head cocked back before entering the plea through his lawyer, Sarah Kaplan. He said only, um, he, he said only, I do your honor and I understand it, as his judge set a date for his next court appearance on November the 2nd. Now, the court issued a protective order against ASAP Rocky, forbidding him from contacting the members of the ASAP mob. And Kaplan um, asked that the court order go both ways. She says, I will request the protective order be mutual because my client is also in danger. She told the judge who responded that Kaplan would file documents to get the order. Now, the praise the Lord rapper was hit on Monday with two counts of assault with the semi-automatic firearm with the allegations of personally using the firearm in the altercation. Now, that's what now that's what they were saying now. And then um, the district attorney said that um, discharging a gun in a public space is a serious offense that could have ended with tragic consequences, but not only for the person y'all targeted, but also for innocent bystanders visiting Hollywood, which is facts. Then the new charges came after the rapper was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon linked to the same incident arriving at the L.A. International Airport with his girlfriend, um, Rihanna, in April. And he was released on a $550,000 bill. OK, so that's just what it is. So basically, um, ASAP is saying that he ain't did nothing. That's what he's saying. He said he ain't do nothing. He said he ain't assault nobody with no with no deadly weapon. That's all he's saying right about now. And I don't know what's true and what's not. All we know is that somebody shot some fire, some fireworks, not some fireworks. Somebody shot 
two gunshots in the air and we need to know who it is because if it wasn't asap rocket then who the hell was it because all of y'all got y'all own beef that's going on so what could have possibly happened for these gunshots to be going out that's all i'm saying so what what what's really the deal here like what's really going down like 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 dmx say is going down like what's going down with this situation we need to know what's going on but um Whatever's going on with ASAP Rocket, I like ASAP Rocket, and I also like him with Rihanna. So, of course, I'm going to hope that he didn't really do this, and hope that he's able to be there for his son. But if he did the, the crime, he got to do the time now. But he's boldly saying that he pleads not guilty. So, we got to see he's innocent until proven guilty at this point. So, we don't know what he did or what he did not do. But he did say that he's not guilty. That's what he's pleading. That's what his plea is. His plea is not guilty. That's what the plea is, honey. That's what the plea is. And we're going to see exactly how this shit works out. That's all we can do is see how it works out, honestly. That's all we can really see. So, um, child, we're going to see how it goes. we definitely going to see how it goes, okay? We're going to see how it moves and all this other good junk, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it on that story. Um, prayers to ASAP Rocky if he didn't do it. That's all I'm going to say, if he didn't do it. So we're going to move on to the next story, which is Omarion. Now, as you guys already know, Omarion is putting out a documentary talking about his um, experience with B2K and every damn thing else under the sun with that situation. And as you guys already know, the remaining members of B2K will be going on Drink Champs, and I will be covering that. I definitely will be covering it. I hope you guys are ready for it because I'm definitely going to cover it and I'm going to do a live lit chat about it. So I hope you guys are ready for a lit live chat. I'm sorry. I'm definitely going to be doing that. So um, we're about to go ahead. So the Neighborhood Talk um, posted some shit that Omarion got. I think it's something um, from the documentary that he's about to put out. I think that's what this is. So Give me a second. Let me go back to the post itself because it's somewhere in here. And I just had that post, child. I just had it. Where is it at, honey? This this is the thing that I hate when I'm trying to do a yes for the mess. I always find myself losing the damn article that I had. Shit. I always end up losing a damn article that I had from the very beginning, child. And then I have to sit up here and talk to y'all as I find the article. But like I said, um, the remaining members of B2K will be on Drink Champs. And I think it's going to be this week. And I'm definitely going to um, going to um, talk about it and cover it. So I found this um, article basically saying that Omarion confirms that Jay Book um, taunted um, Rasby doing a millennial tour for being scared of his alleged, you know, um, attacker, Chris Stokes. Now, they got um, they got audio from this, so let me play it for you guys, and then we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to move on to the very last story. So let's get into it, y'all. Here we go. And some of his energy, the, ag the agitated, they were moving around, and, you know, he wasn't focused, and he was saying things, and yeah, I was just like, yo, this was, this was good. We found out that what triggered him, what agitated him, was that Brooke wore a t-shirt that said, I don't feel safe. That was clearly a reference to what Raz had said in New York. Raz being officially off the tour, I don't feel safe, I don't feel safe, because I feel like Chris Stokes is around. I wasn't really picking up that Brooke was fucking with his head like that. Why the fuck would you wear the shirt? You know what I'm saying? Why would you do that? Hey, give me some game, man. Let me go. Yeah. Oh, we, we love you, okay? I know I love you. We love you. I do love you, though. Okay, first of all, they said chapter three. So is this whole documentary already out? Because I had no idea that it was, if it is. But... First of all, let me go on record to say that was fucked up, J-Boog. Definitely fucked up, okay? Fucked up. Fucked up. Fucked up. Because you don't taunt nobody with their trauma. You just don't do no shit like that. And that's really messed up. That's messed the fuck up. I don't like that. It's fucked up as hell. You don't do that to somebody. Why would you go and wear a shirt like that? 
Why, why go wear a shirt like that? And y'all claim that y'all was brothers growing up. I would never do that to none of my friends. I would never do that to Jamar. Jamar been my friend for 10 years. I would never do that to Josiah. That's been my friend for two years. I would never do it to Terrence and he been my friend for three years. I would never do that. Like, why would you take somebody's pain and then just sit up here and, and do this? But at the same time, as fucked up as it is for Jay Boog to do what he did, it's also fucked up for See, okay, it was the internet. It was the internet. It was the internet the entire time. Okay. Let me go back. Just like I said, I think that it's messed up that Jay Book did what he did, but I also think that it's really grimy that you're going to use him to promote your book. You're going to take his trauma and all the things that he already went through and the things that he put out there to the public, which y'all distance yourself away from him about to promote your book. Like, yeah, you you sitting up here trying to make Jay Boog look bad, which that is fucked up that he did that, but you also make yourself look bad too because you using his trauma to promote your fucking book. So I'm just trying to understand what, what, where are we going with this? What, what exactly are we doing with this? Where are we going? Because you're fucking it all the way up. I don't understand that. And I don't understand why um, this shit is still even a topic of discussion right now. Like, we don't give a fuck about B2K that much to keep on talking about this shit like this. But it's like, okay, girl, like, whatever. It's just whatever. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But we're going to see more about this. And like I said, if the documentary is out, I was meaning to cover that, doc that damn documentary. So... Is it already out? If it is, this is going to be a premiere video anyway, and I'm going to be in the chat looking at the comments. So is the, is, the, is the damn documentary already out? Because if it is, I need to see it so I can cover it. Because I was saying I wanted to cover it when it comes out. And I'm definitely covering that damn interview with the rest of B2K on Drink Champs. I'm definitely doing that. So it is what it is. But, um... Hold on, y'all. But yeah, um, but yeah, child, like that was some that's some bullshit. But we're gonna go ahead and get into R. Kelly um for the for the last story. This is R. Kelly. Now, there's a lot that's been going on about R. Kelly the last week. Okay, first of all, they say that Joycelyn, the girl that one of his girlfriends, child, they say that she pregnant by him. They say that she pregnant, honey. And then we turn around and we hear that the girl that was on the video with him back in 2000 who um, had to testify against him in 2008, she's finally going to testify. And her name is out there, Roshana, R Roshana um, Edwards Landfair. Um, that is, uh, what's her name? That's Sparkle's niece. Um As you guys already know that R. Kelly was once prosecuted for this and, you know, he was... Um, Prosecuted for allegedly abusing a minor in a in the infamous case in, in 2008 in which she never testified. But, of course, that's about to change now. And I wonder what's going on. Now, they say that, the um, you know, R. Kelly has been con already been convicted of sex crimes in New York. And he faces th 30 years behind bars. And he got another court date ahead of him. Now, on Monday, his federal trial in Chicago, for which he's facing similar charges for, is about to begin. OK, now, one of the four accusers in the Chicago case, all of whom will um, testify, the woman who R. Kelly was accused of urinating on on the tape at the age of 14, among other heinous crimes. She's going to take the stand as well to speak on the 08 case and her own experience with him. Now, we all want to know why she's doing that at this particular point in time. OK, now. 
uh, according to the um, new court filing cited by um, the Associated Press, okay, prosecutors say that the unidentified alleged victim from back then, now in her 30s, will address the claims that R. Kelly rigged the 2008 case in an attempt to obstruct justice, including paying off and threatening this woman at the time. Girl, did sparkle sparkle said that from the very beginning she said that he that she that he paid her family off she definitely said that kelly was acquitted he went free largely because the alleged victim refused to cooperate and testify but now it seems that she would explain why that happened from her own perspective and for the first time ever and her identity has remained hidden after all these years i wonder what is going what's made her do this I wonder what's made her come out and wants to testify against him. Now, that's one thing. And then the next thing, they said that the jurors will be shown the video. Okay. Um, they say it's very vile. It'll be shown in the courtroom. It would definitely be shown. And um, I know that these folks are not ready to see that video. I've never seen it and I don't want to see it. But the woman is in her 30s, and um, she's referred to in the court papers as minor one, and she will not be the star witness, okay? So, uh, yeah, I that's really all we got for this story, and I, I only have a couple of things to say. I might do a live chat about this. I'm not really sure, but all I'm going to say is this right here. This is a lot that's going on right now. This is a whole lot, and all I got to say is this right here. Baby. Baby, baby, like TLC, baby, baby, baby. All I gotta say, I want to know why she's um deciding to testify. Not that it matters because you know I'm all for R. Kelly getting his getting what he needs to get, but I wonder why she's testifying against him now because I do know that she didn't testify against him back in the gap. Her her mama, um, her father, they were still friends with R. Kelly even after that they were still working with R. Kelly like the, like the daddy was still playing bass on his records like they were all still having a cool relationship with him and they cast it sparkle the fuck off but his nigga so I'm trying to see what's really going on why are they testifying against him now because they still have been hanging around this man for all these years and you know sparkle was the one that was cut kicked to the curb with all of this was going on so my thing is What's going on and why y'all want to throw him to the wolves now? That's my thing. I really want to know that now. So we, I, we'll probably figure this out. I don't know. Like, I think I'm probably going to cover this case now because especially now that the girl is going to, Roshana going to be on here. That's her name. Her name been all over the internet for, the, for a while now. But I definitely want to see this case through and I definitely want to cover this case. I do. I want to see how this is going to go. Now that I know that she's going to be a star witness, I'm very interested in this case now. And I wonder if Sparkle going to be able to testify. Hmm. I wonder if I could get an interview with Sparkle. Hmm. Better yet, I wonder if I could get an interview with the girl. But I don't know how I will be able to do that because she's nowhere near social media. So I don't know. But y'all, that's really all I got for today. Like, that's all I got. My stomach just started growling. I'm going to head to the hood and give me something to eat. But um, as I get up out of here, you guys, be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, click on that notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And also, if you want to follow me on any form of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok will be down in the description box below. All right? With that being said, Scotty by Nature is signing out. And I will definitely um see you guys on another one. And um as I leave, I will leave you guys with the promo from Nova Cosmetics. Your boy's out of here until the next one. Bye. Things to do is